Action B. Playing Share Cards. At the beginning of the game, you will be dealt eight share cards. You will look at those eight share cards and all the players simultaneously, yes, simultaneously, will select two different cards as their starting stock. And this is something I just learned. They must be different. They cannot be the same color. And so the players will all choose two. They'll flip those up, face up. And so everyone will know the starting companies that the different players are invested in. Then all the players will have six cards in their hand. And when cards are in your hand, they don't count yet. In order to make those cards count, you have to spend an action playing the shares to what's called your portfolio, which is the shares that are face up in front of you. Those are the cards that will count when we get to the scoring. There are two different ways to play share cards. You can either play all your shares of one color. Say I had three green, I could play all three green face up. The other option is to lay any two shares you want. So if you really have two shares of two different colors that you want to play, that's the way to do that. Ideally, it's nice to play three or even four of the same color all at once as you're being more efficient. After you play shares, you get money for laying down shares. This is one of only two ways to get more money in the game. For each share you played, you're going to get $2 from the bank. So usually you're going to get four or six or maybe even eight dollars for playing two, three or four shares respectively. And that will give you more cash for playing more planes on the board. And laying down shares is important before those scoring cards flip up. A lot of times that first scoring card sneaks up on people. It's about a third of the way through the deck because when that pops up, you'll score all the airlines based on who has the most of the shares face up in front of them for each company. So that is action B. Play all your shares of one color or two different shares and get two bucks per share. Now let's get into the two actions that we haven't talked about yet. Action C. Acquire abacus shares. Air abacus is a separate but important part of the game. All the other companies have to increase their value through plain planes. Well, Air Abacus represents this gigantic airline company that is growing and taking over and monopolizing air travel in Europe. This company is going to increase in value over the three scoring cards. With the first scoring, it's worth a combined seven victory points. The second scoring, it's worth a combined 15 victory points. And after the third scoring, Air Abacus gives away a total of 31 victory points, adding up all the places from first to fifth place. So getting shares in Air Abacus is usually a good idea because you know it's going to be worth a certain amount of points, and it has the potential to get you a lot of points if you get the most of these shares. Getting the Air Abacus shares works a little bit differently. They are not available from the share deck. In order to get the Air Abacus shares, you need to discard the shares that you have to get them. You can either discard cards that are currently in your hand, not in play, and this is usually what people do, but you're also able to discard shares that you've already played face up in your portfolio. And sometimes this can be a good move. If you have a brown share sitting there and everyone else in the world has brown shares, you might say, oh, that's not really doing anything for me, and discard that to help you get some more of that air abacus. So you have two options when doing action C. You can either discard just one card from your hand or portfolio to get one of the air abacus that are in a separate stack, or you can discard three cards from your hand and or portfolio to get two air abacus stock. Now you pay for it a little bit in the ratio. You're paying one and a half cards when you do that trade, but you make up for that in efficiency. It only takes you one turn to do it. So that's sort of a tough choice, whether you go one for one or you make that sacrifice and get rid of three to get just two. Now when you get them, those Air Abacus stock then go in your hand. The Air Abacus stock have red backs, so it's public information how many of those you're holding in your hand. They're also not yet in your portfolio, so on a future turn, you will have to play those stock. They're all considered the same color, so if you wanted to build up a bunch of Air Abacus and play those all at once, that would probably be a good move. But keep in mind, in order to get Air Abacus stock, it's at least a two-turn process. As on one turn, you're going to have to take action C to get some of the Air Abacus stock, and then on a future turn, you're going to have to play the stock. But that is action C discard in order to get air abacus stock finally action d is the simplest and that is simply just to take eight dollars from the bank 
you're going to try to get a lot of your money, $2 per share from action B when you play stocks. But a lot of times this just isn't going to be enough so that you have enough money to keep building. So you're probably at some point going to have to at least once take this action of just say, all right, I'm going to take $8 so that next turn I have more planes. And that's it. Those are the four actions. Action A, play one or two planes, then draw one share card. Action B, play stock from your hand into your portfolio, either all of one color or two different stock, and get $2 per stock. Action C, discard cards from hand or portfolio to get air abacus stock, one for one or three for two. And action D, take $8. So on your turn, you will do just one of those, and then it will be the next player's turn. And so play will cycle quite quickly around the table. So there we go. Those are the four actions. I'm going to pack up my computer. It looks like they're talking. It looks like they may be ready to go. So I'm going to get off on my trip now. Uh All right, we got those wings de-iced, and we are ready. We'll be heading out on the jetway, proceeding for takeoff. Unfortunately... We will need to stop because directly in front of me, there is a family of duckies and they are adorable. There must be at least seven or eight with their soft, fluffy yellow fur and oh my goodness, if you could see them. And I can only imagine they're probably making cute little quacking sounds like quack, 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 quack. So we're just going to have to wait. Uh, they don't appear to be moving very fast. One, oh, oh, isn't that cute? One of the duckies has a bit of a baby ducky limp, so it might be just a few minutes, so thank you so much for your patience. We'll be off in just a few minutes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I, I was hoping we would be getting going. Uh, I guess I'm just going to finish up here and talk about the different companies and, and the bonus markers and uh, the end of round and end of game scoring. So Sonny, are you going to eat those peanuts? No, no, I'm not going to eat those peanuts. Ooh, honey roasted. All right, let's talk a little bit about the different companies in the game. There are 10 different companies. Yellow, blue, purple, red, black, brown, green, orange, gray, white. Each of these companies is just a little bit different. And if you flip over your player aid, you'll see what the difference is. This is also represented by the number on the card. For example, the yellow company has a 16 on it, and the white has a 7 on it. This represents the potential size of that company. The number means two things. How many shares there are of that company in the share deck, and how many planes that company has available. So the yellow company has a lot of planes. You could build it up very large, but it's also easier to get stock in. So the players might fight more for it and or play more of those stocks since there are so many yellow stock in the deck. And vice versa, the opposite is true with the white company. You probably won't have as many people involved in that since there's only seven cards in the deck, but at the same time, there's only seven planes to work with. I should mention that the Air Abacus stock, there's a limit of 20 of those. Now the four smallest companies, the green, orange, gray, and white companies, are the smallest companies in the game, but they have a special bonus connection marker on the board. Remember those companies have a starting city. The smallest four companies also have a destination city where they want their planes to reach. Those destinations are two to four links away. And if that company manages to get to their destination, they get a value bonus marked on the bonus marker. And these bonuses are between six and nine. So a significant jump up. So be aware of that. If you have the green, orange, gray, or white company, you're able to get it to that marker. Then the marker comes off the board and that company immediately gets that one-time bonus. Finally, let's talk about the scoring. As I mentioned, there are three scoring cards in the deck. About a third of the way through, about two-thirds of the way through, and on the bottom 11 cards of the deck. After every turn that someone adds planes, they're going to draw one stock card, and you'll flip up a new stock card. If that stock card is a scoring card, then the game is paused while we score. Give the scoring card to the person who flipped it up so that we know whose turn it is when we're all done with scoring. 
The first thing that happens is the five available stock cards. Players get an opportunity to get a free stock in their hand when a scoring is triggered. What this allows for is for the five cards there to flush on the board because sometimes they get a bit stagnant. So what happens is the player whose turn it will be after the scoring will get first choice of those five face-up cards. You'll go around the table and each person will pick one of the face-up cards before you will do the scoring. If you're playing with less than five players, the other scoring cards will just go away and you'll flip five new stock cards. Then you'll begin scoring. Scoring works very simply. Just go on your value marker track and go down the line through all 10 companies. The value marker track is divided into bands and each of those bands tells you how many victory points that that company is going to score. So say our green company managed to get to the value number 23. That is in the band marked with a placard 63210. That means the person with the most shares of that company will get six, second most three, third most two, fourth most one, and fifth most zero. So if I had the most green shares, I would get six points. If there is a tie, then you would take those two places, add them, divide, and round up. For example, if my neighbor and myself both had two green shares, First and second place are six and three. Six plus three is nine. Divided by two is four and a half. We round it up to five. We would both get five points. And then say another player maybe had one share of the green stock, they would get third for two points. The other players had no green stock. So even though there's a fourth place there, you don't get any points if you don't have any shares in the company. So usually I just go through from the company that's valued the most all the way down to the company that's valued the least to make sure that you score all 10 companies. Finally, you go ahead and score Air Abacus. Players compare how much they have, and in the first round, the scoring, it's marked there on the board on a nice clipboard. As you can see in the first round, the scoring for that is 4, 2, 1, and 0 for first through fourth place respectively. You would score that and then you would be ready to continue the second round. The player who has that scoring card will start again by either adding planes, playing stock, getting air abacus stock, or taking $8, and the game will continue till we get to that second scoring card, and so on. Then after that third scoring card comes up, which is in the bottom 11 cards of the stock deck, and you tally up the points, it is good to know that victory points, you can keep them hidden, they have a back, so you don't know if you have 1s, 5s, or 10s. Keep them hidden through the first and the second scoring. When you get to that third scoring, it doesn't really matter anymore. You can flip them all face up. You can add those all up. And the player who's earned the most victory points is the winner of the game.